Hello everyone. Today we're having a lecture about mantras. You have a worksheet in the Google Classroom where you can write along what I'm explaining about the opening and the finishing mantra. Yeah, so mantra means a tool for the mind. And there are a lot of mantras in the yoga philosophy and yeah, we just focus on the opening and the finishing mantra of the Ashtanga practice. So yeah, we're usually singing it together in call and response with our teacher. Or if we practice alone, of course, we uh, practice, we're singing it alone if we feel like it. To yeah, set an intention before we practice and also after practice to devote our practice. Um, yeah, I have here the Sanskrit version of um, the opening mantra. And I will explain a little bit about what the words are meaning and uh, yeah, the deeper meaning behind it. Um, first of all, the science perspective. Um, yeah, so there are studies about when you sing mantra that actually the background noise in your brain, this area where the subconscious, which is always thinking, never makes you completely relaxed and has all the sorts, monkey mind, that this area is actually calmed down by singing mantras. And um, yeah, so that's why our, our nervous system gets gets relaxed, and also the the melody. The, maybe you noticed it before when you have this deep sound of Om. It's just like so much calming and grounding. And um, this group frequency of singing it together makes it also quite powerful in a sense of feeling the community. And yeah, these are basically the, the science, science things about it. Um, coming to the history and the origin, there is the first line of the opening mantra. So, Vande Gurnam Chara Naravinde. Vande means I'm bowing forward, so I'm honoring and saying um, thanks to Guru Nam. Guru is the teacher, Nam is the plural form of it. Guru Nam our teachers. So we can think about all the teachers who gave us knowledge about yoga and who helped us in postures, who were there for us holding space and yeah, just wanna wanting to thank them in the first line. Um, then there comes the next line, Sandasita Svatma Sukhava Bode. Svatma is the true self. Um, so basically our teachers, I write it here, true self, teachers, um, basically our teachers helping us to find our true self, to help us to give this connection between body and mind and to, yeah, make us look inside. So, samsara hala hala moha shantye is hala hala. The word for poison and moha is the illusion so it's poison and illusion so what else is what is the context um we want to thank our teachers here that they basically heal us from the illusion and yeah the, the poison is the illusion um so what illusion um in yoga, we always think about the infinite and the things that are on earth, which we get so attached to. And yeah, the attachment from the Buddhist, Buddhist philosophy, you know, cause us all the suffering. Um, so basically, the poison of the illusion is healed by our teachers or the teachers holding the space to help us to get detached from the things around us, from the world, from the things on earth, from, yeah, even our bodies, money, love, relationships, all these um, things we just have on earth um, that we're holding on to. And so we also think about when we sing the mantra that we want to let go of all the things and be more in the inward space and look inwards and what is actually um, worth to honor in life. The next four lines are about Patanjali, this uh, old sage that is like, yeah, people don't even really know if he's 
was existing or not, if he was the one that wrote the Yoga Sutras or not. But yeah, I mean, we're saying he did. So we're thanking him that he did and <laughs> that he gave us this guidelines of living a life in harmony. And yeah, you have other lectures about the sutras. So I don't won't go further into this. Um, but yeah, so description of Patanjali, Abahu Pura Pusakaram <laughs> means his upper body is a human body. Janka Chakrasi is all the three things he holds in his hands. So Janka is the shell, Chakrasi is the discus, and Asi is the sword. So in like pictures of Patanjali, he always has those three things. And um, so the shell means actually as you can hold a shell on your ear, you hear the sound and um, it's basically the sound. And chakras is the discus, which is a metaphor for time. And this idea of yeah, time is endless or not. And there's still a lot of philosophy about our time system, if it's actually real. Um, yeah, so that means uh, also like beginning and ending of life. So you can go further here, but let's come to the last thing he has in his hands. I see the sword. Um, for me personally, a sword is always like, oh, a war. But my teacher told me that the sword is in the philosophy actually something that divides like this pool of illusions where we don't know right, wrong, left, right. Um, so it's dividing and shows us um, what's actually important in life and makes us more like sharp thinking, if you want to see it in this way. So there's a lot of uh, interpretation room in those mantras, as you see. <laughs> and yeah, Patanjali, our um, old sage there, where, yeah, look up some pictures of him. It's quite interesting. <laughs> And we're finishing this practice also, uh, the, the, sun, the mantra also with an OM. And yeah, to, to find a meaning for yourself, I would love if you would write this out also on your um, sheet. So you find your, your personal um, intention, for what you want to set in the beginning of the practice. And yeah, first important, super important to say thank you, be grateful for the teachers who bring us the knowledge, who help us uh, through our practice, who hold the space, who are like there for us every day, putting all their energy into it and um, helping us healing our minds. So very important to keep the gratitude. And second, if you don't feel that comfortable to honor some patandalim, which you anyway don't know, <laughs> then myself, I just think about being also grateful for the place I can practice, the mat I have under my feet, the body that can practice, that is healthy and fit. And yeah, so, and I want to like, make the intention that I can look into myself, that the practice helps me to calm my mind, to go away from the illusions, to see what's really important in life, that the practice brings me up the swords I, I have to work on or I have to take care of. And yeah, that in the end, I can sit on my mat and see this little light in me shining. And that will lead us exactly to the finishing mantra.